Good evening. I'd like to welcome all of you to the candidate forum for Whittier City Council Mayor and Council Members of Districts 1 and 3. My name is Margot Rieg. I am with the Whittier League of Women Voters. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan political organization whose purpose is to promote the informed and active participation of citizens in government. We put on candidate forums as part of our voter service activity so that people can listen to and question the people vying to represent them in our local government. Our city government is supposed to provide services to our residents and structure and planning for the effective operation and development of the city. Locally elected council persons are just that, local and should be accessible and responsive to their constituents who elect them. We're happy to see all of you here tonight and to welcome our TV and video audiences. Before we begin, our city clerk, Rigo Garcia, will give us a brief overview of the new features in the voting procedure for the city of Whittier. Mr. Garcia. Yes, thank you, Margo Reed. Uh, Rigoberto Garcia, your city clerk and election official, thank you for having me. Um, ballots have hit the mailboxes. Mm -hmm. The majority of ballots started arriving on Friday, and we think that they will, will have about 100% delivery rate by tomorrow, Tuesday. Mm. Any voter that has not received their ballot yet is encouraged to give us a call or send us an email or do a request on our website on City of Whittier org forward slash status in that sim in that same link you can check on whether we've received your ballot whether your ballot will be counted or or pass the election if it did count um, so because ballots have already hit the mails that means that our vote by mail drop boxes have also uh, opened we have two additional new, we have two additional new vote by mail ballot boxes and I'll name them briefly the first we have one in uh, district one at a church on Greenleaf called La Iglesia de Greenleaf. We, we have the second one in the second district in the Uptown Galleria, in, in the Uptown Greenleaf Galleria. In district number three, we also have one at the Whitwood Branch Library. And in district four, we have a new VBM drop box at Penn Park. Now, for those people that want to vote in person, uh -huh. that is going to begin on Saturday, April 6th, all the way through election day. The hours will be from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. daily. Uh, again, my office is here to handle any questions, comments, or concerns you may have. And thank you for giving me this time to speak. Thank you. Thank you. And the polling places will be where the vote centers? Oh, sorry. Thank you. I, I skipped that. Um, in District 1, we also have York Field will be an in-person voting location. District 2 will be hosted by Palm Park. District 3 will have Parnell Park. District 4 will be at Michigan Park. As a reminder, um, voters can go to any voting locations, but the two new uh, in-person voting locations are at York Field and Michigan Park. Thank you. As a reminder, remember that you, as ballots come, you can choose to vote them uh, at any time and that you may drop them off at a drop box, you may drop them in the post office, or you may take them to a vote center. Just be sure that you do that on or before April the 9th. <clears throat> in the mayoral race, uh, which we will start with, we have three candidates who are vying to represent you as mayor of the city of Whittier. This is a two-year term. 
by having a two-year term, people throughout the entire city of Whittier are able to vote in every Whittier city election. And District 2 and 4 will not be electing council members at this time. They elected those council members two years ago. Um, District 2 is sort of the uptown area on the map. It is green. Um, it is, a lot of it is above Beverly. Uh, and District 4 is the purple area, which is um, running along Lambert and then up through kind of central Whittier. So those two areas will be voting on mayor only. Later, we will be hearing from the candidates who are vying to represent you from areas one and three. And we will relook at the map at that point uh, because you people will be voting for mayor and for a city council member. Now we will hear from our council candidates. Um, they have drawn for order of speaking and they have two minutes to make an opening statement to tell them, tell you about themselves and what you th they think are the most important things happening in Whittier right now. Um, our timekeepers are sitting in the front. You want to wave? Uh, they will be holding up stops, uh, minute signs and then a stop sign. And uh, as you know, when the stop sign goes up, you're welcome to finish your sentence. But let's make sure it doesn't extend all the way into a paragraph. <laughs> so this evening, oh, and we have um, cards and pe pens in the back. If you would like to ask a question, you may w wave your hand and our ushers will bring cards and pencils to you. Uh, if you've written a question and you would like to turn it in, please hold the question up and they will collect questions from you and bring them to our question sorters. The question sorters are reading questions for clarity, for pertinence to city government, for civility, and <clears throat> for variety. And they will be handing me the questions as the evening proceeds. So we will begin with our opening statements and the first candidate this evening who drew the, the A, the number one, is Joe Vinatieri. Thank you, Margo, and good evening, everyone. And it's great to be here, and thanks to the League for holding this forum. Uh, it's an honor to be your mayor, uh, and sometimes, well, it's very, very important to me. Uh, leadership is very, very important, and it's been joyful. Uh, to have a very good two years with the council that is all moving in the same direction in one accord. And that leadership team, your leadership team, has accomplished much together. As your mayor, it's my responsibility to take the pulse, to bring the community together, to work with all people to build a better future. People love Whittier. It's history, it's beauty, it's care, it's concern. It's my vision, our vision, to make Whittier the best place in Southern California to raise a family. Perhaps a lofty goal, but nonetheless a vision that as a team, together, I believe we can make that happen. So over the past several years, we've had a number of challenges, but we've overcome them. Whittier is doing very well. Our police, fire services are exemplary. We continue to work closely on our homelessness issues. Our schools are moving up, up, and up. Our city is on a solid fiscal footing, much better than many other Los Angeles County cities. And critical to all this is partially our business community, the jobs they provide, tax revenues that flow to our schools and the city, and wages income that the various businesses provide for our residents. Of course, the vast, vast majority are small businesses, which are the backbone of America and the backbone of Whittier. There are 88 cities in Los Angeles County. Whittier is known for taking care of our police and fire, our businesses, our vets, and our residents. Again, thank you to the League of Women Voters for holding this forum. Together we are Team Whittier, and we're making this the best place in Southern California to raise a family. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Vinatieri. <coughs> Excuse me. 
excuse me. Gesundheit. <laughs> Next, we will hear from Rolando Cano. Hi, good evening, folks. Sorry. Good evening, folks. I want to thank the League of Women Voters Whittier for hosting this event. Uh, my name is Rolando Cano, and as I said before, you have three very qualified uh, people running for this position. We've been running for years, and we've been addressing the same issues that you have. And I don't know about you, but my pulse is racing any time the sun goes down and I'm in Uptown or I'm in a shopping center. We know that a lot of crime has increased and we know that gas going is still around. But we could do something here in Whittier. If you haven't heard, we have $98 million in surplus. So anything that you've presented the council should be done because there is no excuse. Before, we didn't have money. We had CalPERS. We had sacrifices to make, neighbors that we lost due to the recession. We're in a good place, but we could be better. We talk about the schools. Yes, the school districts are doing great by themselves because our city does not fund the classroom where the money should go to. We know the red tape. My goal is to bring in money into the classroom directly to the students bypassing the red tape so that the kids benefit. We need to create sidewalks so that they can walk down the street safely to school. We need to we need to create a system that protects every single one of you because you come out here and you ask for support. You ask for help. You prepare for three minutes and right in the last second they change it to one. And little have they known that they, they were not aware that they could not do that until they recently introduced this loophole that says that they can reduce your time to one minute. But we prepare. You come here for respect, for protection, and you come here to create ideas and present them. So why are you being ignored? This has to stop now. You demand better, you should get it. You demand safety, you should get it. We have $98 million and little has been done. Only one person is happy here in front of you. And it's not myself and it's not Mr. Savage. We're not happy, we need change, and we need to do more. Thank you, Mr. Cano. Next, we will hear from Isaiah Leon Savage. Greetings, everyone. As she just introduced me, thank you, Ms. Reek. I am here to ask of the people watching and the people in this room, let's put aside the political parties. Let's put aside the cultural differences. Let's put aside even the the financial differences. We know there's a working class. We know there's an upper class. Also, there's below working class. Let's put aside all of that. And when you take all that to the side and leave it out, guess what? We all are sons and daughters of the republic, which means that we, the people, still hold the power. This is my duty as a mayor. This will be my duty as I've already taken the oath of office to the Constitution to uphold and defend it. But now I would like to carry that out and show the people how that actually works. It hasn't been working that way with this last administration because they have completely turned their back on their oath of office. But I ask you to put all that to the side and remember that we are a republic. So the power literally belongs to you, the people, the legal registered voters. And as mayor, I am going to make sure that power is returned back to you, the people, the legal registered voters, not the Democrat, not the Republican, not the Independent, not the Green Party, not black, white, or any other, to you, the people, the legal registered voters of the Republic. This is my duty as mayor. This would be my duty should you elect me to be mayor. So... I ask you to come out and vote. Come out, encourage people to register to vote. Because being a registered voter is not just about voting for a candidate. Being a registered voter literally protects you under the law. Oh. Now I'm stuck. Thank you.
Okay. Our first question will be begin with Mr. Cano, go to Mr. Savage, and end with Mr. Vinatieri. This person asks, would you support an injunction to stop the Uptown Promenade Project that includes the chainsaw massacre of over 100 ficus trees? Why or why not? Mr. Cano, you okay. have one minute. That's a great question. And the first thing I got to say is, yes, those trees should never be on the chopping block. First, your elected officials before those trees. You need to make a decision on how to protect our city. If, if you're not aware, we, we talk about businesses in Uptown. What needs to happen? The Greenleaf Promenade only benefits one person, and it's $20 million to begin with on a two-city block. I've already seen some of those numbers, and they're projecting $100 million for two-city blocks. What happened to the old plan? The old plan took years to develop, and then it was just wiped away overnight. We got to do more. What are we doing to protect those businesses? Absolutely nothing other than getting a red team that comes out, identifies who's on their way out, then goes, draws in outside businesses, and offers them 50% back of their taxation. Why is that not being offered to the businesses in Uptown and throughout Whittier? We need to do more, and this is ridiculous. We need to protect our city and our history. Thank you. Mr. Savage? Certainly. Would you support an injunction to stop the Uptown Promenade Project that includes the Chainsaw Massacre of over 100 ficus trees? Why or why not? One, the reason I would support that injunction is because when the report was given a couple of weeks ago by the city manager, he actually gave a false report, especially when it came to dealing with the ficuses. The ficus tree, anyone who knows when they planted those trees, there was a strategic plan in place. They knew that the surface roots of those trees wouldn't grow anymore after 10, 12 years. They also knew that the roots of a ficus tree grow straight down. Now, I have a sentimental value towards it because those trees were planted in 1966. Mm -hmm. So I was born in 1966, so I have a connection to them. One, they block all the dust and dirt that comes out of the desert. Two, uh, they do provide us with oxygen. I mean, that's the symbiotic relationship between humans and trees. Thank you. Mr. Vinatieri. Thank you. Um, as all of you know, uh, because we, my wife and I have a business on Greenleaf, uh, I'm recused from being involved at all uh, with the project. Uh, and so I'm really not going to present any kind of response to the question. But I will say that my understanding is it's not $100 million for the full project. It's $20 million. Uh, and as far as 50% 50, 50 back to do businesses, um, I'm not aware of that. I'm not, I don't think that that's correct or accurate. So uh, with that, that's my answer. This person asks, will the new food court at the Groves of former Nellis property negatively impact the revitalization of Uptown. And we will begin with Mr. Savage, um, and please elaborate or explain. Uh, then come to Mr. Vinatieri and end with Mr. Connell. Well, it's already has had a negative impact on Uptown Whittier. They put millions of dollars into tearing down and building something up that the community literally didn't want. It was somewhat backwards when that money should have been taken and put right there in the business district, Greenleaf. 
from Hadley all the way down to Whittier Boulevard. However, this administration seems to be in, in a habit of, if it ain't broke, let's break it. So you should check the health of the community next to that grove because when they were digging up the dirt and allowing the dust to blow over into the communities, they didn't tell the people that the dirt was toxic. They didn't tell the people that, and if you check, the cancer cases spiked during the beginning of that grove because they weren't being transparent with the people about how toxic that place really was. And they took the money that should have been put in the uptown and put it down there. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Venetary. Uh, the food court is actually a huge incentive stimulus for people coming into Whittier. And it's, it's all about a rising tide raises all ships. And let me tell you what's happened already. We've had all kinds of discussion about that food court. The King Richards down the street, which is under construction right now, is going to be an entertainment food type of situation also. The reason why the developer there purchased was because he saw what was going on at the Groves. So what you have is you have a synergistic effect that's happening, and, and I want everyone to think about it. You've got Uptown on Greenleaf. You go down Philadelphia. You're into the Groves at the new eating area. You go down the street, and you're at the King Richards and the uh, f the new food uh, market, and and uh, much like the Anaheim shopping or Anaheim, um, uh, all those of you've been there, you know what I'm talking about. So. I'm excited about it because I think it's bringing people in. Thank you. Mr. Connell? Like Mr. Savage pointed out, there are toxic chemicals at the groves. They were just buried on the commercial side. And with these new storms that are coming, usually no one plans for a 100-year storm. And when you mix water with arsenic, rodenticide, or any other toxic chemicals in that site, we don't know what's coming. So an outdoor eating place, I need to remind you, also have a super site at five points that affects a four mile radius. So we should be focusing on cleaning up that area instead of not informing the people of what's actually happening. Now, how does the groves affect Uptown? It fractures it. There's no connection between our commercial districts and I would love to build a free transit system that connects every single business district, parks, and schools like the City of Commerce. It, we have the money to do it. We have $98 million to solve our problems, to fix your problems, to fix your streets, your infrastructure, and connect our businesses and still have over half left over. So we could do more, <coughs> but get informed. Right now, our commercial districts are fractured. They're not connected. Let's connect them. Thank you. This question says, mental health is important not only to unhoused folks, but also regular everyday residents. What plan do you have to address this lack of resources in the city? And we'll begin with Mr. Vinatieri. Well, I'm going to begin to say, I think there's a huge assumption that there's no resources. I don't know what the basis is for that, but we have L.A. Cotta. We have Spirit Family Services. We have several others that are aimed for both adults and for children. And they are used quite heavily. And they are all about mental health. So we're doing that. Uh, in fact, the uh, City of Whittier funds both Lakata and Spirit and a couple others that I don't have off the top of my head. So um, we need more mental health because what's happened coming out of COVID is, I don't know if you've seen it, but a lot of people are really, really fearful. And they need to understand that they are okay, that we're here to help them, and we are helping them. So um, I'm, I'm pleased with that. And uh, we're going to uh, basically, the budget's coming up here again, and I know there's probably going to be further discussion about mental health resources. Thank you. Mr. Cano? Okay, so some of you may have seen Prop 1, which automatically, if, when it passes or if it passes, I know it's been going back and forth right now, and it's a small margin. But if it passes, the state takes a large chunk of the money that we're currently receiving 
to deal with the homeless. They're shifting to mental health. The state is taking the money back. We've done very little to nothing here dealing with our homeless. Now we're shifting it to mental health because the money's gonna come from that direction. What about the homeless problem? We need to become accountable for our homeless, become Boise compliant, because once we do that and we take accountability for our homeless, our police officers are able to enforce the law, we're able to take care of our city, but also create a path for those that need support. And if they don't want the support, then we have every legal right to remove them to protect our city. We need to offer both paths. It's a razor's edge, but we need to enforce our laws and move away from a new definition on how to bypass responsibility. We need to do more. Thank you. Mr. Savage. Could you repeat the question, please? Mental health is important, not only to the unhoused folk, but also regular everyday residents. What plan do you have to address this lack of resources in our city? One of the plans is something that's actually already happening right now. I don't know if you've noticed, but the Norwalk Mental Institution has started to reopen. Now, this was caused, the closing of it was caused by the ACLU. Even though Reagan got the blame for it, it was the ACLU that closed down the mental institution, but they came with no contingency plan of where to put the people that they were letting out of these mental institutions that ended up on the streets. Now, we should work with our neighboring city in Norwalk because since they have the largest facility in Southern California uh, for the mentally uh, incapable and work with them to getting these people off the streets back into a program. Though there are people who live on the streets, we should create programs to show them how to work, how to go and get a job, how to create wealth for themselves. Thank you. Okay. This next question has to do with the police department, um, and it has a couple of corollaries. Uh, this person says, I am new to Whittier, but in the six months I've lived, lived here, I am hearing that the city is understaffed in the police department. Is that true? What are you planning to do to fix this? And then a subset would be, um, would you like, would you support uh, the return to foot and bicycle patrols in Uptown? And we'll begin with Mr. Cano. Okay, great question. You know, folks, I know that I present a lot of issues, but the bottom line is our officers need support. You know, a few years ago, we were told that we had 140 officers. Now we have 120 something. And the thing is that those numbers are combined serving Santa Fe Springs as well. Now, what we need to do is create a strategy. We could have every single officer filling a position, but we still don't have a strategy. If you look at Santa Fe Springs website and you look at our police department and what they do there, they, frag they break up the city, they patrol the city, and they create uh, programs to work with the community, with the kids, there's art reach programs. We don't have that. We have six officers that run back and forth. We should protect three sectors to begin with, East Whittier, Uptown, West Whittier, and then move to a substation in District 1 because the goal line is coming and no one is addressing. We don't even have meetings through the city to find out what's going on. We're going to get caught in a bad situation, we we need to come up with a strategy, not just spend money like crazy. Thank you. Mr. Savage? Okay, we have 80,000 people in Whittier. The national and state level for people, for a city of that size means you need 52 policemen per every 10,000 residents. We only have 128 policemen here. So if you divided that in half, there's only 20,000 people receiving protection. Should I become mayor, the goal is to have 480 policemen added to the police department. Reason being because there's a station in each district and we can put 100 policemen or whatever it takes at each district plus having enough to fulfill the contract that we have with Santa Fe Springs. So 
we don't meet national and state levels yet as far as the policemen are concerned when it comes to protecting our town. Again, it's 52 policemen per every 10,000 residents. We have 80,000 people here. Thank you. Mr. Benateri. Well, to whomever asked the question, welcome to Whittier. And with respect to Whittier Police Department, um, no, we're not understaffed. In fact, we're at 128, and uh, the chief has been uh, given the authority to hire more. And he's in the process of doing that. We have a number in the uh, uh, Rio Hondo uh, Police Academy as well as Orange County Academy. So um, it's, it's a top thing for the mayor and for your city council. It's all about being safe. And we have done all kinds of things to help the Whittier Police Department, and they're very appreciative of it. They have the body cams now. They have the latest up-to-date equipment. Uh, and even though, it, unfortunately, here's our stats. You see the red there? The red means that all our crimes, except for theft from a vehicle, is up. Well, why is that? Because we live in Los Angeles County where these people are arrested and they're not prosecuted. And on top of that, the judges are doing zero bail. So these people are getting back out and re-offending, recommitting. That's what's going on here. And we all need to understand that. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> This next question also has to do with policing, then we'll go on to another topic. Uh, what community services are called into play besides just the police when there is a call for police assistance? What counseling, economic, housing, and rehab options are presented to the person who is in trouble? And we'll begin with Mr. Savage, go to Mr. Vinatieri, and end with Mr. Connell. I hope this is answering your question. However, there needs to be a symbiotic relationship between the police and the people of the community. Meaning it will create checks and balance. Most people should know from history, checks and balance started on a local level. It was when the militia was sent back to their homes to protect their communities, 1778, to become policemen. There was a symbiotic relationship, meaning that the police could trust the community, the community could trust the police. We need to get back to that, to where one side trusts the other, one side takes care of the other, one side looks out for the other. Even though policemen are more highly manned with the equipment, guns, you know, tasers and all that, it still needs to be a relationship between the community and the people. And the policemen should all come from their community, meaning any policemen that we hire should come from Whittier. Thank you. Mr. Vinatieri. Thank you. So this is a this is a really good question because as we all know in this day and age, um, a, a, a violation of crime is not necessarily what's uh, the best interest of the individual who's the offender. Because a lot of times, especially since COVID, uh, the crimes, the people are, are, are doing the drunkenness or doing the alcohol um, and, and, and the uh, uh, drugs and that. And of course, they get arrested. They get arrested and then they're kicked out. They're kicked out. And they're not then uh, filed upon by George Gascon. So what they need is we need to go back. Prop 47 did away with the drug courts and the accountability. So we need something like that again. But we do community policing here in Whittier. And I don't know if you've seen it, but we have different people, different officers doing different areas of the city, and they get to know their people. And by the way, the question was asked earlier about Uptown Bike Patrol. Absolutely, I think we need to bring it back this summer, and we will be pushing for that. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Connell. Okay, so we need our dedicated police back where, we, where they used to be. We remember them in Uptown. You know, Officer Scoggin, I remember meeting him when I first came here riding a bike. In our commercial district, we, we knew our officers. Every summer we get them, they drive by, they cruise on by for a couple of days when the attention is there, when there's an election coming up, we get them. When there's a large enough complaint in a voter area, you get the whole show, you know, a, a vehicle with bright lights driving through. But we need more. We need to support these officers. We need to create communication. You know what? 
I don't like to focus on, on the negativity, but Mr. Boyer, when he passed, we're always reminded of that. Why don't we celebrate his memory and create a music foundation to help and work with kids? And we can have officers build relationships with these kids because we have talented officers that do more than protect us. Let's finally honor this man instead of reminding the public what he gave up. Let's honor him for what he gave us, which is his life, and let's honor him with his memory. Thank you. This next question asks, uh, what is your vision for the redesign of the Whitwood Shopping Center? And we'll begin, uh, I think we're back to Mr. Vinatieri. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> so as you all know, um, the owner of the Whitwood uh, is in the process of looking at doing different plans for the property, uh, predicated on the fact that the Sears uh, and the, um, um, the Sears and the um, uh, other will go out of business because they've gotten beat up by online uh, trade. So what's been really interesting is that Sears, I don't know if you know this, but all the Sears in Southern California are gone except for two. One of them is in Whittier. So they're going through their process right now. They're, they're trying to look out to the future. This is something that's going to take place down the road, and it's going through a whole process. And I think it's really important that all the people who are interested and who are concerned about it, that they make sure they, they put their name out there and go to the, the forums because there will be further forums coming up. We need to make sure that everyone has opportunity to be heard. And my understanding is, I haven't talked to anybody at the um, uh, the um, Whitwood, but my understanding is they're listening uh, carefully to what's being done and what's being said. So keep it up. Thank you. Mr. Connell? OK, like I mentioned that red team before, it was mentioned in the last forum by one of the candidates. It was brought up. It was news to me. But there's a, there's a group that works through the city that's identifying small businesses that are in the process of closing because we just got over COVID and they're still struggling. We've not done anything to attract businesses to our backbone, which is these small businesses. What's happened at the Whitwood? They're going to drive out any small shops and they're going to bring in larger companies to establish themselves. And according to what was explained, the moment that they complete their first year, they get 50% of their taxation their sales tax back. We need to support the small business. We were promised small businesses at the Groves. We were uh, promised expansions and support in Uptown. Whittier Boulevard is going to be dismantled. There's going to be businesses are being um, replaced by housing. Where is the support? They're just buying small businesses up, chewing them out, and they're offering an incentive to outsiders instead of supporting local business. Mr. Savage. Well, to the owner of the Whitwood and to the homeowners of the Whitwood, I would ask and suggest even that you have the California State Conservationists come down and do a survey of the mineral rights that are under your property before you decide to sell and give yeah, your legacy away. Uh, secondly, when you put up these new structures, you have to add more police. You're putting up more structures than we have policemen to protect them. Right now, I would suggest a full financial forensic audit on the whole budget of the town and some transparency, which we do not have, of, of what we have in this town and stop lying to people i i gotta say it you know this stop lying to people people don't like to be lied to and we know with this whitwood situation we're being lied to thank you this next question asks what strategies should the city employ to make significant reductions in greenhouse gases in our area both for private and public entities to address climate change. And we'll begin with Mr. Connell. Okay, thank you for that question. You know, I presented that I would like to bring in a transit system that connects our commercial districts, parks, and, and our, um, our schools. 
That would reduce traffic if we're connected. And it could be done with the funding that we have and the items that we currently have on board. That would reduce uh, the, the footprint that we leave behind with this increasing traffic. But the other thing is, the people own a lot of properties, not just in Uptown, but throughout Whittier. Properties that are purchased by the city through general funds. We need to create parks. I don't like to see the kids being hassled and removed because they're skating in Uptown. I get it. But let's build a park. There's an empty lot on Norwalk next to the trail. Let's build an Olympic, a, Olympic skate park for them because skateboarding is not a crime. It's an Olympic sport. We need to build more parks around here because it, when the city says we're building housing but we got 25 parks, sometimes you could be outside and there's a small sliver of grass and they call that a park. That's not a park. Thank you. Mr. Savage. That's actually easy one. We must leave the trees alone. They are what soak up the carbon every year. They are what keeps the ground moist, keeps the air moist. Uh, we must find a way to work around nature instead of trying to run over nature. I would rehire the city workers that were let go in 2019 who were people who worked with cement who were engineers who knew how to work around the roots of trees. Uh, there are people in Whittier who are innovative. I've seen engineers come to these very meetings showing that there's other alternatives. Now, when you say reduce your carbon footprint, that's talking about culling the herd. That's talking about taking away humans because we're the only ones that release carbon and we're the only ones that leave footprints. So, Leave the trees alone, and the greenhouse gases will leave us alone. Okay, Mr. Vanateri. Thank you. Um, so this is something that you've heard this mayor talk about and this council talk about for a number of years, and that's the idea of the people mover, to move people around from the college down through the uptown, down to the groves, to the hospital, ultimately out to the Whitwood, back through the quad, back up to the to the uh, the college. Very, very green. You don't have to get in your car. You get on the people mover. And we're in the process of doing that. And some of you here have testified on that. So that's very green. What about creating parks? Well, what have we done? We're redoing Parnell Park. It's going to be top class park. Uh, the Greenway Trail East, we bought that property out there. There's going to be a park out there. Anaconda Park, we bought property there that opened up. We're going to be going there also. Uh, so we're doing stuff with parks, but that relates to green, but it also relates to kids. And I said to you that it's very important to your council that we have a place that is kid-friendly, family-friendly. So we're able to basically kill two birds with one stone that way. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, you brought up the topic of parks. And the city pays a lot of money to private health. No, the Trust for Public Land has the goal to create parks in every community that are only a 10-minute walk from any home. Many areas in Whittier do not meet that standard. What can Whittier do to increase the uh, proximity of park space to pe where people live? And we'll begin with Mr. Savage. Well, we have a ton of empty lots, some half acres, some a quarter acre. However, they've been empty for the past 25, 30 years. I'm pretty sure if the owners of those properties were given incentives to have a park created on the empty lots, we'd have enough parks for the children and the elderly. And it's so horrible that the children and the elderly are the most ignored in our community. They don't have anywhere to go, and the parks that they do have to go is being overrun by the homeless. So these empty lots, uh, we need to make use of them because they're actually becoming eyesores. They're actually starting to breed unwelcome company because now people are using them as campsites. Um, or just throwing, dumping the trash. Thank you. 
Mr. Vinatieri. So I totally disagree with the statement that we're to be within 10 minutes, walkable. We have that here in Whittier. We need to stop and think about it. We have all these hills here. They are a park. Anyone who lives along the hills, within 10 minutes, they're easy to get up there. Then if you go down a little bit south and a little bit west, we have parks all the way from almost to 605 by Franklin School, all the way to Palm Park, all the way out to East Whittier, north of the boulevard. We have parks south of the boulevard. We have done, our predecessors in Whittier have done a great job on parks. Does that mean that we should just blow it off and not get any more? No. We want to get more because parks are for kids. And that's what we're doing here because that's about being family friendly. So I'm excited about the fact that we have the money uh, for the Parnell Park. We have uh, money for a number of parks. We have uh, uh, places where people who come in and do developments, they have to put money into a special fund for parks. We're doing it, everyone. And I'm thankful that we are. Hey, Mr. Connell. Okay, first, the highest concentration of families is in the west side of town. We have Whittier City School District that has a large concentration of elementary schools and junior highs. Then we have the high school. That Greenleaf Promenade needs to stop. We need to end it now. We need to protect those trees and expand those empty lots into actual parks, into community centers. Mm -hmm. we, we can teach classes through mentorship in these areas. The thing is that we keep getting excuses as to what we should be happy with. You should be satisfied with what you're getting. You should be happy that some money is going to those parks, except it's not Whittier money. It's money given to us by outside entities. Let's start spending the $98 million for parks in our community, in Uptown, on Whittier Boulevard. We have a park that's forgotten. We need to expand. Make these areas accessible for the for the people when we're being told 10 minutes away that's ridiculous if you live in the right side and you understand family you know you need it thank you we have now arrived at the conclusion of the mayoral forum and we will have closing remarks by each of our candidates and we will do this in reverse order they will have one minute to give a uh, closing statement and we will begin with mr savage Thank you this evening for listening. So if you want transparency, I'm the person to vote for. If you want a safer town with more police, I'm the person to vote for. If you want a forensic audit, saving our trees, not slaughtering them, I'm the person to vote for. I'm the person that's literally qualified. I have a military background, so I know how to protect the community. I know military strategy enough to where I could take those policemen and protect our community. I know with a forensic audit, it will be more transparency between the community and the council because without that, that's taxation without proper representation. I mean, it's just a straight up constitutional violation. So with me, I will uphold my oath to protect and defend the Constitution and the people that live under it. Thank you. Mr. Cano. Okay, so we have a lot of issues here in Whittier, and if you look up Rolando Cano on Google, you'll see them all addressed. And they come direct, the information comes directly from our council. So you'll find that, uh, that information through our city council. But that aside, my main purpose here is to serve families and the community. I want to build more parks. I want to build a skate park for these kids so that they're in an area where they're appreciated and not kicked out because they bother the businesses. I get it. But we also need to expand services for the community. We have a large special needs community out there. We need to do more for them. Create parks that don't add one swing to be ADA compliant. Let's build a new city for them. Let's build an outdoor skating rink. Remember Skateland? Let's bring it back. Let's bring community back. We're all qualified here, but you have a big decision to make, and th this is what do you want to see next? What you see now, or do you want to see something better? Vote for Rolando Cano. 
Thank you. And finally, Mr. Vinatieri. Thank you. There, there's been a bunch of figures that have been thrown out. I heard this 98 million thing again. Our city budget is $98 million. Half of that $48 million is in reserve, a very, very healthy reserve, by the way. And we're thankful for that. We, every year, get the Government uh, Accounting Office uh, uh, financial report. We win an award. Very transparent uh, because we have federal funds that we have to watch. So um, let's, let's deal with facts. And I just want to, once again, say thank you for the, the league. Um, I like where we're going. Uh, I think we're going absolutely in the right direction, um, and I'm very appreciative of our city council team that's made things happen these last two years. Uh, we're in a unique position compared to many, many other cities, and we're well situated financially. And I want to say once again, thank you to the people of Whittier for voting yes on Measure W. Uh, we position the city to do what many other cities can't do, step out for the next two generations of Whittierites, and we have a shared visionary purpose. So let's come together as Team Whittier, and let's make this the best place in Southern California to raise a family. We can do it. I'd like, to thank all. I'd like to thank all the candidates this evening who are running for mayor to represent the city of Whittier. Uh, remember that people who live in uh, districts two and four will be voting for mayor. The people who are living in districts one and three will get to hear their candidates speak in, the ne in a few minutes. Uh, we appreciate your being here and we appreciate your running. Uh, and thank you again, and we will uh, adjourn for a few minutes while we change candidates, and then we will come back to start the council uh, districts one and three forum. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> Take care of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get back to that. Yeah, that's why I designed That's why basically. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, Sorry for getting your name and fighting traffic. Yeah. <laughs> I put those down because the lights were shining on oh, the dining room. Oh, I took three of you. Thank you, Mr. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. That's what I like. Oh, that'll work itself. That's what I like. 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 Okay. And I took two others down, so I don't really want to put them. Well, we're going to put them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You want to put this one right here, then? This makes. Good job. Yeah. It'll come up in this round. Yeah. 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 I still have two of those stands that I put down. Do you want to stretch them out a little more now if you do or not? Yeah. Yeah. I guess I have to put this one You had it here before.
<laughs> Monica Santa's here. I saw her, but I don't I don't know where she is. Then maybe she's in the restroom or something. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me, but we need to have the candidates for the uh, council districts come forward and take their seats. Doing well, thank you. Good. <clears throat> the green button. There. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I think <sighs> for each of the candidates. Um, button and then when it's your turn to talk I'll call your name and then you can turn your button on to green okay, okay. and I'm going to try not to cough <laughs> I think we're ready good evening I'd like to welcome all of you to the candidate forum for Whittier City Council Districts 1 and 3. On the map, which is being shown above, you can see that District 1 is the yellow district, which runs from about Broadway down to the city boundaries on both the west and the south sides. And it, um, I think, crosses Painter just a little bit. Um, it encompasses a, a lot of uh, uh, parts of Uptown. The District 3 is the Brown District, which is mostly um, East Whittier, the Whitwood area, uh, and the Friendly Hills area. These two council districts are up for election this year. The incumbents were elected four years ago in 2020. We will be, I have seated them just in alphabetical order. We will be asking the same questions to all of the candidates since they will all be dealing with the same issues as council members. Uh, and we hope that if you have a question that you would like to have asked, uh, there are cards and pencils in the back. Um, if you would like to, if you have a question that you would like to have answered, um, we can, you can bring them up or we can send one of our question sorters back to pick up a question from you. Uh, so if you have any more questions, please let us know. Just raise your hand. <laughs> we have three candidates vying for your vote in area one. And we have two candidates vying for your vote in Area 3. I will be um, asking questions of all of the candidates. We will begin with opening statements. Each candidate has two minutes to make an opening statement. We will start here with Ms. Martinez, and we will work all, all the way down to um, Ms. Warner. And when we do closing statements at the end, all, we will begin with Ms. Warner and work our way back to Ms. Martinez. 
In the interim, with the questions, I will start with a different person each time and let you know which direction we're moving. So our candidates who are vying for Council Area 1, District 1, are seated immediately next to me. Uh, we have Jessica Martinez. We have Maggie Moe, Magdalena Baranya Moe, and Marianne Pacheco. For Council District 3, we have Monica Senna and Kathy Warner. So we will begin with opening statements. And our first uh, speaker will be Jessica Martinez. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, it's First of all, I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters for putting on this forum. It's all, always a pleasure and an honor to, to be invited to one of these um, forums that you always put on. So uh, very briefly, uh, I've been blessed to serve for the last four years. I'm a wife of a veteran, a mom, a former teacher. Uh, I have a Juris Doctorate, a BA in Political Science, two Masters in Human Rights Law, and bioethics. That's my educational background. Currently, I serve, besides being on the council, as a delegate to the California Contract Cities. I'm a trustee of the Greater LA Vector Control District. I'm a director in the Hillside Open Spaces, as well as Pointy Hills Habitat Preservation Authority. I'm a delegate of the Whittier Pointy Hills Conservation Authority and the Wildlife Corridor Conservation Authority. And I serve on the ad hoc committees of the Uptown Streetscape Beautification, uh, policing contract review, and uh, uh, hopefully what will be our fire station number 17, the brand new um, police station, and the solid waste and recycling uh, negotiation. Uh, over the last four years, we've expanded parks and, and trails. Uh, we've allocated 51% of our budget to public safety. Uh, we've added a homeless shelter to our city. Uh, we've renovated many parks in, throughout the city. We've put $20 million in a city funding for Uptown Whittier Streetscape, uh, which is kind of an upgrade from the other plan, which basically we've been working hand in hand with members of uh, our city to come and, and give us your opinion on what's going on. Um, we've been fiscally uh, responsible for uh, all of the monies that are coming into the city, as you heard earlier, uh, by our mayor, we're audited and we receive awards for the way that we govern. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we will hear from Maggie Mo. Good evening. My name is Magdalena Barrañon Mo. My friends call me Maggie. I was raised in Murphy Ranch, and I'm an old-time Whittierite and proud to say that the city of Whittier is my hometown. My first advocacy began when I was a young girl at Rio Hondo College. I fought for the Children's Center to be on campus because it was important for the students to finish their education and to fulfill their dreams. I have been, I have been actively and, and civically engaged at Whittier City Councils fighting for affordable housing, lighting to protect our Whittier Police Department and our community, advocating against recycling centers in the middle of a community, fighting against hazardous waste like at the five points where the pollution is the toxic wakes are, are ruining our water system, I love the city of Whittier, and my commitment to the city of Whittier is I am a member, a past president of Whittier Sunrise Rotary, past, uh, vice president of Whittier Regional Symphony, member of East Whittier Music and Arts Foundation. I'm a member of the Whittier Women's Club, and I'm the founder of Whittier for Concerned Citizens. When the pandemic hit, I worked to help my community. I closed down my business and I advocated to do COVID-19 testing to protect my community while my city councilwoman chose to sue the city of the city the state of California not to help undocumented people during COVID. That was wrong. That was discrimination and racism against people in my community and when you attack the community that is wrong. No. 
Thank you. Um, I think we need to do something about this. I need to remind people that you were to talk about yourself and not about other candidates. Okay. Thank you. That was inappropriate. Okay. If, if I could have five seconds to say something. I think we'll just move on. Okay. Next, we'll hear from Marianne Pacheco. Yo me llamo, oops, Yo me llamo Marianne Pacheco y quiero asegurar a los residentes de habla hispana en el distrito número uno que aún mi presentación será en inglés esta noche. Yo soy bilingüe y estaré aquí para escucharlos y para ser su voz en el consejo municipal. My name is Marianne Pacheco and I'm running for the Whittier City Council District 1. I'm running because I believe it's time for change. And I'm really, and I'm ready now to face the issues and to ask the hard questions. Questions like, how do we ensure non-market rate housing is available to all Whittier residents? How do we adapt and change our policies towards businesses in these evolving economic times? How do we deal with the challenges facing us with our homeless population? How do we create and maintain a healthy and livable environment for all of our city? How do we strengthen that crucial link between transparency and community engagement? None of these questions have easy answers, but I'm here in Whittier, in this community, to find them and to implement them. Given my experience and expertise, I know that I can do it. I'm not asking you to vote for my extensive resume, my many years at Rio Hondo, my community work, my prior experience as an elected official. I'm asking you to vote for me and what I stand for and what I want to address. I'm Marianne Pacheco, and I'm running to represent the good people of District 1 on the Whittier City Council. Thank you. Next, we will hear from Monica Senna who is running for Council District 3. Um, yeah. First, I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters. Uh, not, button, so I better get used to that button thing, huh? Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to thank the League of Win Women Voters, not just for tonight, but for their many, many years of helping uh, to be a critical part of saving our precious democracy. Um, my bio's out on the table if you're interested in it. I wanted to talk about my reasons for running. Uh, ideologically, I do not believe that it's healthy for a candidate to run unopposed. Democracy depends on exchange of different ideas. If you combine old ideas with new ideas, you end up with the best ideas. Practically, I'm very worried about the future of Uptown and the Whitwood Mall. With a position on the council, I could help ensure that these areas are beautiful, have lots of green open spaces and trees. They're all electric and filled with businesses that are a good fit. And of course, we want areas for our children to safely congregate. Both areas need to have a commission comprised of contractors, business owners, citizens, and city people to make recommendations and help guide the decision makers. Also, bringing new blood into an organization is a good thing. I would work to make Whittier cleaner and greener. Also, for several years now, I have been speaking to the city council, speaking at the city council meetings and sending emails to members and even occasionally talking to them in person, but to no avail. avail. They have been very polite and appear to be listening, but again, to no avail. There's an old Native American saying, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. <laughs> Communication needs to improve. Posting an article once a month or quarterly um, for... Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> you may f finish your sentence, Ms. Oh. <laughs> uh, 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 communication needs to improve. Um, it needs to be a a two-way street more frequent and even uh, weekly. Social media makes this possible, thank goodness. Thank you. Okay. 
<laughs> and finally, we will hear from Kathy Warner. Thank you. I'm running for a council seat to continue serving Whittier. As public safety has always been a priority, the council has successfully fully funded the police department, authorized the chief to overhire new officers, built and fully paid for a new state-of-the-art police station, endorsed and support Senate Bill 1262, which would reform AB 109. We've added a paramedic to LA County Fire Station 59s in East Whittier and a paramedic assessment engine to Station 28s in Uptown Whittier. And we are building a new Station 17s on the west side of town, which will house two units as well as having two additional paramedics. We've addressed homelessness in Whittier by creating a navigation center to house individuals who have a nexus to Whittier. We've provided wraparound referral services for those individuals, and we contract with CityNet to continue to reach out to those remaining homeless on the streets, especially those who are mentally ill and have addiction problems. During my tenure on the council, we have completed both the Greenway Trail West and East to the La Habra city limits. We continue to explore ways to connect our Greenway Trail to the San Gabriel River, River Bike Trail. We've enlarged and remodeled both the Whitwood Branch and the Uptown Library. We've completely remodeled and enlarged the Uptown Senior Center. We have more youths playing sports in our community and not enough playing fields. Consequently, we've installed lights at Murphy Ranch Little League Field so that more kids can play baseball. We're completely redesigning Parnell Park so that we have up to eight new soccer fields. In conjunction with the high school district, we're creating a soccer complex at Sierra Education Center. We continue to focus on infrastructure, which includes a tree trimming cycle for all city trees, a pavement management plan, maintenance and replacement of our aging sewers and water infrastructure. We successfully redeveloped the declining Nellis property to include senior housing. If you are pleased with what you're hearing, please vote for Kathy Warner. Thank you. Thank you. The first question um, asks if you are in support of, of version of term limits for all city council and uh, mayoral offices. And we will begin, and, and please explain your answer. We will begin with Ms. Mo, and then move our way down to Ms. Warner, and finally conclude with Ms. Martinez. Yes, I am in, um, in favor of term limits. We need, when we have the same people making the same decisions over and over again, and our city continues to be sued over and over again, that means that we need, we need new blood, we need new ideas. It's stagnant when we have the same people in office, and I think it's important that um, we're able to vote in districts. As you know, um, that was a big problem. The city of Whittier had to be sued so that we could vote in districts. So yes, I definitely believe that, that we, need to, we need term limits and um, we have plenty, we can do it where people have the ability to be able to serve, serve their community and to do a good job and to provide excellent service. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Pacheco. Um, yes, I do favor term limits. In uh, fact, I was the first person to sign the petition. I support the petition because I think that right now we need new blood and new ideas for the city of Whittier. And while part of me believes that the best way to have a term limit is not to vote for somebody that you think isn't doing the good job, I do believe that the reality right now is that we do need term limits in the city of Whittier. We need new blood, we need new ideas. We need to make sure that the local government remains broad-based and open to many participants. Um, I'm definitely in favor of term limits. Uh, the President of the United States has term limits. The California Legislature has term limits. Uh, the supervisors of the county have term limits. The many cities surrounding us have, their city councils have term limits. Um, the thing about term limits is it levels the playing field. For um, incumbents, there's a tremendous advantage, of course, for by being incumbents, name recognition, but there's also 
uh, tremendous advantage because they get funding from the businesses that do city uh, businesses that do business with the city, and uh, new people they just uh, have to scrounge. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Warner. Thank you. I'm in favor of term limits. However, my philosophy of term limits is that that power is held by the people. I don't want anyone telling me how to vote and who to vote for. I want to make those choices. Uh, sorry to pick on you, Bob, but Bob Henderson is a great example of the people exhibiting their power in regards to term limits. And I don't think any of us can uh, denigrate the work that Bob has done uh, in this city over the many, many, many terms that he served on the city council. So yes, I believe in term limits, and that, is, that power is held by the people. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, Ms. Martinez. Um, I would agree with that statement. And I would also like to say I do believe in term limits. They're called elections. Thank you. Thank you. OK, this, this person says, uh, why is our city election in April? It doesn't even coincide with the primary. Do you support or will you support aligning our city elections with the November general elections in the future? And we will begin with Ms. Pacheco. I wish I had the answer to why the election is in April. Um, I have heard that it was going to be less expensive than having the county run it. Um, I don't like to be paranoid and think there might have been other reasons for uh, moving the election, creating confusion among the electorate. And I just, it doesn't make any sense to me. So yes, I do support having the election aligned with the general elections. Mm -hmm. It makes sense to people. It makes sense for candidates. And it's very clean, if you will. It's very clear that these are the people who are vying for the votes of the people they wish to represent, rather than saying, go out and vote. Oh, and by the way, don't worry about Whittier, because that, that's next month. So you're going to get something else. And don't worry if you get confused. Just make sure you vote. I don't think that that's good government. Thank you. Ms. Senna. Um, to, um, the off cycle election for city council is by design. It's designed to help ensure that the incumbents stay in office. Um, it uh, decreases voter uh, turnout. Voters, uh, the one year that the state mandated that they align, voter turnout tripled. And it also costs a tremendous amount of money. It costs over half, over a quarter million dollars and um, approaching half a million dollars. I know this um, because I did the numbers myself. I think there's a lot better things to do with that money than run our own little special election designed to keep the incumbents in power. Thank you. Ms. Warner? Whittier is a charter city, and as such, the charter states our elections will be in April. The state law changed and in 2020 dictated that our election had to be in November. Um, cities uh, that were charter cities filed suit. They prevailed in the suit, so the city of Whittier was able to change their election back to April according to their charter. In 2020, the county election was $333,000. In 2024, this election, had we gone with the county, it would have cost $445,000. However, because we are handling our own election, the cost is $261,524. By doing it ourselves, we are saving money. Additionally, candidates that would have to participate in a November election uh, have to spend a lot more money reaching a lot more voters. So it's uh, financially easier for candidates to run in the election in April. Ms. Martinez. Well, actually, our uh, local elections still uh, aren't up to my satisfaction. I would like to see same-day paper ballots. Um, but 
we're not going to do that here. So um, because we're not doing that, at least we can have our election results on the very same night as we actually have our elections. We will have the vote tallies that same night. Why? Because of local control. And also, uh, once again, it's a lot less expensive to run them through our city. And of course, our city employees are trustworthy people. It's very transparent. If you want to watch the voting, you can actually watch it on television or you know, pay a, pay a visit. You can come here and watch. Thank you. Ms. Mo. The, the off-cycle election is done by design. In my opinion, it is designed so that the fewer people that vote, the better it is for the incumbents that are in office. In other cities, when there is a, uh, an election, everybody knows about it. There, it's, there are cities that are driven by elections. There are advertising everywhere. Where is the advertising here in the city of Whittier? We should have a huge banner at City Hall, Whittier City Election, but there isn't anything. I have been fighting to raise our vote status, our stats in District 1 by going door to door, door to door, so that the people will go out and vote. We are not, they say that we're dumb, but we're not dumb. It's designed so that we don't vote. So I'm an American, and I'm proud to be an American, and it's un-American for people not to vote. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this question. This question has to do with development fees. Should the city of Whittier's uh, Quimby fees for developers or the in lieu fee be raised in order to build more athletic fields within the city? And for this question, we will begin with Ms. Senna. Um, that's not a fair question for me because I'm a, one of my big things is I'm a ch uh, kid advocate and I'm an ex-coach. I'm an ex um, uh, athletic director, and whenever you say more fields, healthier things for kids, I think I don't care what you do. I'm in favor of that. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Warner. Mark, I'll read it again, please. Uh, should our Quimby fee and or in lieu fee be raised to build more athletic fields? So those fees have a minimum that uh, developers must pay, and then they are also negotiable. So the rates can be raised according to the negotiation with the developer. So of course, uh, in the city, we always want to get as much as we can for our community and for the kids. So our staff will always try to negotiate those fees as high as possible. Thank you. Ms. Martinez. Um, I believe it's important to get as much as we can for the members of our community as possible. And if we can get a higher rate so that we can actually have more funds to spend on our kids, then I would say yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, no, I think um, Maggie and I don't know. Ms. Mo. Did you check? I'm in favor of any fees to bring fields for our community. As I walk door to door, I hear many people, many parents are asking for fields. I live below the boulevard. Our soccer fields for, we used to have over 800 children that would go and play soccer at uh, Frontier High School. That has been taken away from them. We need more fields for baseball. I'm a baseball mom. I, I, I volunteered at Murphy Ranch for over 10 years, so I love um, baseball, and I think it's very important uh, for children to be children, to be involved in sports, football, soccer, baseball. We do have York Field, but unfortunately it's closed because it's coveted for uh, baseball, uh, the baseball fields. But I, I'm in favor of anything for children to be children. So yes, I'm in favor of any fees for baseball, for fields. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Pacheco. Who's not, going to, who's not going to be in favor of more fields for children to play? Who's not going to want to have more green space? Obviously, 
Nobody up here is going to say, no, don't spend any money on the kids. Don't spend it on the fields. I want to know more how those developer fees are put together. I want to know what's the base level. And I want to know other ways that those fees can be used. The city of Anaheim has used them to allow housing that is affordable for people. Why don't we do that? There are other issues that I think are there. So of course I want fields, but I want to see those developer fees used to benefit everyone in the city, and especially those who want to live in the city and cannot afford it. Thank you. Uh, this <clears throat> next question asks, would you support an injunction to stop the Uptown Promenade project that includes the chainsaw massacre of over 100 ficus trees? Why or why not? And we will begin with Ms. Warner. So as you heard the mayor say earlier, if you were in attendance, he's recused on this matter. He cannot weigh in on this matter. <clears throat> Those of us that can vote on this matter um, are not able to opine. We're not able to give an opinion at this point in time, uh, because if we do, then when the matter comes before us for a vote, we are conflicted and we are not allowed to vote on the matter. So because I am a sitting council member, I'm not able to give you an opinion. Also, I should not have an opinion at this point in time. The process needs to continue uh, moving forward. We're having a study session. We're receiving additional input. And then the matter will formally come before the council uh, at a future meeting. Thank you. Ms. Martinez. I would have to agree with what uh, Council Member Warner also has to say. Uh, and actually, the whole thing of an injunction, it's unnecessary at, anyway at this point. Okay, thank you. Okay, Ms. Mo. I'm in favor of an injunction against cutting all the trees, a massacre of trees. I cannot believe that us Whittierites would allow for outside people to cut our trees down. Most of the people that want the trees cut, they're not even from Whittier. What legacy are we going to leave our children? Our trees are part of Whittier, our history, the charm of our beautiful community. I was raised in Murphy Ranch in an urban forest. Let's save that money and spread the wealth. Let's fix our sidewalks. Let's fix our streets. Let's provide lighting. Let's provide resources for our children, for our education, for our community. Let's not squander all that money, it's not going to be 21, an estimated $21 million, folks. It's going to be close to $100 million, but there's no transparency. So I say, let's save our trees, and let's go to the rally this Saturday at Whittier City Hall at 1 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Pacheco. I'm in, favor. I'm in favor of any action that's going to allow for a genuine reason discussion, and if an injunction is what's going to be needed, then I'm not going to stand in the way of it. I do believe that we need to take a closer look at the uh, Greenleaf Promenade. I think we need to go back to examining that idea of phasing for the trees. I don't want to kill living things. I understand, though, that there can be a need for change over time. I have to say that I think that we need to look at our overall urban forest there are lots of places in District 1 where there are no trees. Mm -hmm. There are um, lots of places where there is no shade. Going back to developers, developers are coming in and putting in housing, and I don't see any trees. If you visit the groves, there's not a lot of trees. There's a new development on Greenleaf Avenue. I don't know about any trees. So yes, let's look at those trees in Uptown, but let's also look at our overall urban forest in Whittier. Thank you. Ms. Senna. Um, I'm in favor of an injunction, but as a last resort. I believe that the trees, not all of them, but uh, certainly not a hundred over a hundred of them, uh, whatever it takes to preserve them is the way to go. It's not too late for the city council to pedal back and relook their plan for what they're thinking about for Uptown. Everyone wants to see a better Uptown, but not at the expense of 
losing uh, environmentally critical trees, that uh, 90 uh, shade, nine degrees cooler. I've walked around uptown when it's hot, and thank goodness the trees were there. Um, it's not too late to compromise. Everybody seems to be in favor of it. Let's go in that direction before we talk about injunctions. Thank you. This next question says, the Habitat Authority is seeking a residential and commercial property tax increase to continue the preservation of the Puente Hills trails. Do you support or oppose a parcel tax for this purpose? And uh, at this point, I think we should take 30 seconds for this question. But back up your answer. And we will begin with Ms. Martinez. I'm actually a, a member of, or a director that sits on the Habitat Authority. And I would have to say I'm not in favor of taxes. I know what Measure W has done for the city of Whittier, and I'm grateful for that. It's made being on the Whittier City Council much, uh, much easier than I'm sure in cycles past. But um, I'm, I voted no on a parcel tax. So thank you. Ms. I'm sorry, can you repeat the question again, please? Okay, the Habitat Authority is seeking a residential and commercial property tax increase to continue the preservation of the Pointy Hills trails. Do you support or oppose a parcel tax for this purpose and why? Yes, I do support a small... Yes, I do support a small parcel tax, but I'm not in favor of this parcel tax to continue over and over. And, um, I love our Whittier Hills. I love nature. I believe that it's important for us to maintain our beautiful Whittier Hills and our habitat areas. Um, it's important to preserve our trees and not to cut our trees down and, and to preserve nature and nature trials, nature trails, excuse me, and our beautiful foliage that is up in the hills, it's important to, to maintain our beautiful uh, and, and to conserve nature. Thank you. Ms. Pacheco. If a, parcel, if a parcel tax is what we need, then let's put it before the voters. Let's make the argument for why we need that. I think it's very important that we maintain that habitat. And if this is what I believe and what other voters believe, then let's put it forward. Let's have them vote on it. Let's have them decide. I'm not opposed to taxes on a blanket level. I believe taxes is fund the services that our people need that I personally could never afford on my own. So let's look at this. Let's put it before the voters. And let's think about what our legacy is in terms of our habitat. Thank you. Ms. Senna? Um, the Whittier Hills is one of the things that make Whittier special. Mm -hmm. How many cities in California back up to such beautiful wild, uh, wilderness? Mm -hmm. Not very many. So it's very critical that we preserve these hills. Um, I agree with Ms. Pacheco. It seems fair to ask the voters instead of city council, again, making decisions without consulting their constituents. Ms. Warner. Uh, again, this may be coming before the council for a resolution to support the matter, so I'm not going to give an opinion. However, I will say <clears throat> that for quite some time, the council uh, has been in negotiations uh, with a vendor for services to the city of Whittier, and as part of those negotiations, uh, we're trying to work out an, an income stream for the habitat. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. What strategies should the city employ to make significant reductions in greenhouse gases uh, <laughs> produced uh, in the area, both for public and for private entities? 
So what strategies could the city employ to improve our um, emissions uh, situation and reduce the uh, increase in temperatures? And we will begin with Ms. Mo. Well, I think that we, it needs to start in our city and it's, it needs to start in our homes. We need to have uh, clean en energy with all these new developments that are being built. We, I don't see any clean energy. Uh, everything is being done with gas. We're building lots of developments all over Whittier Boulevard, but nothing is being done with clean energy. So it starts, it starts with our developments, it starts with our city, with our trucks, our vehicles, and of course our, our landscaping, and of course maintaining our trees. Ms. Pacheco. We need, to, keep doing that. we need to make sure that Whittier has a commitment to being green. We need to make sure that as developments come in, that we are looking at sources for green energy. But we also need to look at that within our own um, city structures. Um, what kind of um, solar panels are we using or not using? As we develop new parks, what are we going to be doing to make sure that they contribute to lowering the greenhouse gas Electrical vehicles, any other things that we can do, I know, are going to be helpful. And how can anybody be against being green? I don't know. I can. Thank you, Ms. Senna. And these uh, are one minute. Uh, along with, along with um, being pro kid, I'm an environmentalist. I spent the past couple of years testifying, or excuse me, not testifying, giving public comments regarding the environment and being greener at city council. Um, uh, where are the incentives for electric and solar? Uh, where are the EV charging stations? La Habra, the city hall, has an EV charging station right in front of it. Uh, where are the incentives for drought tolerant gardens? What's with the grass in front of city hall that nobody ever uses? Um, where are the heat pumps? Uh, there are some hybrid police cars, but where are the other city electric vehicles? Two things are important, to do it and to model for others. Thank you. Ms. Warner. Yes, I wish I could read you every item on my list of uh, four pages here in regards to green initiatives. You can go to our website and see what we've done and what we have been doing. Uh, but really quickly, we belong to the Energy Network. We have a greenhouse gas emissions inventory report that drives what we do. We've joined the Clean Power Alliance. Uh, our new pumping plant uses water efficient pumps or, or energy efficient pumps. Savage Canyon Landfill, and I'll give Bob credit for this, produces methane gas that is piped to PIH to produce their electrical power. And our items go on and on and on. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Martinez. Well, the only way that we could really, really, really lower the green um, greenhouse gases is to get rid of people in the city of Whittier. So um, that, that would be the end all of the solution to, to the problem. But we don't want to do that, right? So we have to come up with common sense measures that are good for the people that live in the city of Whittier that make common, that, that, that are common sense so we really have to think about our solutions before we jump wholeheartedly in, in, into, into, um, into them. OK, thank you. Okay, here's another person who is interested in um, maintaining our urban forest. And uh, it, this person asks, what would you do to maintain Whittier's urban forest? What kind of a budget do you think would be appropriate for tree planting and care of trees? And we will begin with Ms. Pacheco. Obviously. Obviously, maintaining our urban forest is very important. I will tell you that 
I was a teacher of English. I don't do numbers very well, although I tend to be very good with millions. And my answers to what should the budget be is going to sound vague deliberately. I think it needs to be appropriate. I, need, I think we need to talk to the people who really know. We have a great resource in the Conservancy. Let's, instead of having lawsuits, let's have dialogue. Let's talk about what we need to do um, together. Mm -hmm. So yes, we need to conserve that urban forest. And yes, we need to look at the developers and see how are they going to contribute to maintaining it, to making sure that Whittier stays Tree City USA. Thank you. Ms. Senna. Um, a while back, I introduced uh, the concept of tree equity. And it actually means two things. It means when you remove a tree, you plant four in its place. That, once upon a time, was the guideline for the city. That's been eliminated. And when you're talking about tree equity, you can't just say, you know, remove a big mature tree and plant four saplings. You have to plant trees of equal carbon um, uh, take away. Uh, also, tree equity means the same amount of trees in all parts of the city. Some parts of our cities have no trees or very few trees. Others are, have abundant trees. That's not right. Tree equity. Ms. Warner. I grew up on the west side of town on Gretna, and we had the lovely tall pine trees. And I don't think I'll ever forget raking the pine needles. Uh, that gave me a deep appreciation for trees, period, but particularly in our community. Uh, I mentioned earlier that the city of Whittier has a tree, tree trimming cycle that we follow with all of our trees. And also, when we um, do the developer agreements, and I'm going to give Bob credit for this again, uh, he taught us that we need to have those developers not just replace the trees or put in new trees one for one uh, at a certain size, but they need to put them in in multiples. And they also need to be very, very large. And I'll never forget Sprouts in East Whittier, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Ms. Martinez. OK. Um, number one, I think we could encourage homeowners to plant more trees on their own property. Um, we might give incentives to people to also <coughs> plant those trees on their property. And I agree with other with our, my other panel members here that trees are extremely important. I love trees. I was very upset 20 years ago when the city of Whittier <laughs> cut down the tree across the street. There was this huge, beautiful pine tree. Um, so I'm, I'm, I love to see trees remain in place. I love the trees that are along Beverly Boulevard. I don't want to see trees uh, cut down. So uh, as far as what the policy is with regards to planting four for every one, I'm not too sure how well that would work out in terms of the quality of the tree. I think we, we need to do more research as, as far as what kind of trees will provide the most shade. Uh, once they're planted. I mean, I don't want to have a, a a tree and then have this little, you know, puny little <laughs> tree that I've seen around town. So thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Mo. We should be like the city of Orange. We're like in the city of Orange, they pay people to plant trees. Here in the city of Orange, they want to have a massacre of over 113 trees. The trees that were removed on Painter, they were taken out and they planted new ones and they've all died. According to Wayne McBurney, our arborist, we are short of water trucks. We need a driver mm -hmm. uh, to be able to drive, that, drive those trucks so they could water the trees. So we need a budget for our Whittier Parks and Recreation and that budget should be of at least $75,000 to maintain our trees, to take care of them, so that we don't get sued for not taking care of our trees and the liability that's involved with the sidewalks. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> the Trust for Public Land has the goal to create parks in every community that are only a 10-minute walk from any home. There are areas of Whittier that are more than a 10-minute walk from a public park or open space. Um, 
what can the city of Whittier do to um, increase the amount of usable park space in the city? And we'll begin with yeah. Ms. Senna. Okay. Um, I think Trust for Public Lands is a wonderful, wonderful foundation, and they're right on target. In order to meet that goal, we need to uh, adopt the idea of mini forest or mini parks. So if there's a house for sale, if there's a vacant lot, let's buy it and let's set up a um, park that includes rain gardens, that includes uh, elements for children to play. Again, 10 minute walk, I don't think that's unreasonable. Houses come for sale, that's a perfect way to find little places for mini gardens, or not gardens, excuse me, mini parks. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Warner. Uh, so one thing that the city did, I mentioned earlier on um, several years ago, was to develop the Greenway Trail, both east and west, which has been a huge boon to our community as far as, uh, and it is a park, considered a park. Uh, the city just purchased two acres of new parkland, and we did exactly what has been suggested. There was vacant land, it was for sale, and we purchased it. Mm -hmm and that park will be developed. Um, the other thing that we're doing right now is we're looking for underutilized uh, property in the city uh, to be able to purchase for pocket parks. In the meantime, um, we have several joint use agreements with several educational facilities which don't yield exactly a park, but what that does yield is field space for kids to play sports. So it's kind of a, uh, an in-between move while we continue to purchase land for new parks. Thank you. Ms. Martinez. Yes, as a member of the city council and working with the other members of the city council, we have been doing whatever we can to increase park space as land becomes available, including uh, we're going to have two pocket parks in Uptown uh, with the new Uptown plan. So uh, as land becomes available, we're purchasing it and we're making it into park space. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Mo. As a representative, if I was a representative of the city of Whittier, I would represent the entire city of Whittier. I happen to live below the boulevard. We have very few parks, but we do have a lot of empty lots that have, been, that have been sitting there as eyesores, like the one on the corner of Mulberry and Santa Fe Springs. That lot has been empty for years. It's an eyesore. It's a problem for the Whittier Police Department. That would be a great place for a park and open space. And also on Whittier Boulevard and Palm, there are empty lots there, and there's empty lots all along Whittier Boulevard for community gardens, uh, open space, uh, soccer fields, baseball, and a skate park for our children. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Pacheco. Obviously, we, obviously we need parks in our city. We have a lot of vacant land. I'm hearing that the city council is doing something about that but we're not seeing it, you can tell by the answers. I want to see that land developed. I agree with my colleague. We need to look at mini parks. We need to look at tot lots. We need to look at places where families can congregate. One place in District 1 is Broadway Park. That street is, that park's divided by a street. One side has shuffleboards. I don't even know anybody who plays shuffleboard anymore. And the other side has a green space where the families congregate push together. Let's look at what we have and let's do an honest evaluation. Many parks are tiny. Let's use them well. It's not just a green lawn that people need. They need a place where they can go with their families and engage in their activities. Thank you. <clears throat> I think this question uh, asks how the city should deal with um, health insurance for all its employees. The city pays a lot of money to private health insurance corporations for city employee health insurance. Would you support AB 2200, 
which would create a California single-payer health insurance program, which the city would subscribe to. And it would cover people throughout. Uh, it would be, a, as I said, single-payer health insurance rather than individual private health insurance plans. And we will begin with Ms. Warner, come back to Ms. Martinez, and end with Ms. Senna. So right now, our employees pay 25% of their uh, health insurance premiums. In regards to what's being suggested, I would want to receive a uh, data and also a recommendation from staff. We would need to compare the prices for whatever is being proposed with what we're doing now. We would also need to compare the benefits for the employees. We would need to determine are there clauses for pre-existing conditions, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of criteria uh, when it comes to health insurance that needs to be reviewed and uh, determined before a decision would be made. And of course, I cannot prejudge a decision since I'm sitting on the council currently. Okay, thank you very much. Ms. Martinez. Uh, yes. On principle, I don't uh, agree with single-payer health care. The reason for that is because I don't want the government um, to be in control of my life. Uh, for one thing, uh, look at the VA and see how that's run and ask uh, veterans how they like their health care. Uh, look at the DMV and see how that's being run. I'm sorry, I don't agree with that. Uh, single-payer health care, it eliminates competition in the marketplace and it reduces the quality of the care that patients received. Uh, and there's much less, uh, fewer avenues for people to fight back uh, against the, the type and quality of the care that they're receiving. Thank you. Ms. Mo. I would need more information on the benefits and the quality of care um, that the employees would get. Um, I believe that medical insurance is very important and we need to be fully, we need to know exactly um, what uh, benefits and what um, medical um, people are going to get. So I think that I would need more information in order to be able to answer that question. I think it's important for employees to have good insurance. We should all have good insurance. Uh, it is something that is uh, very, a very needed service. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Pacheco. I spent much of my career at Rio Hondo negotiating faculty contracts. And my, one of our very top priorities had to do with the health insurance for the faculty and actually for all of the employees at Rio Hondo College. So I understand the high cost of health insurance. I also understand all of its many permutations. I don't agree with statements that were made um, previously about the dangers of having uh, government take care of things. Maybe there are horror stories, but I also have really great stories about some of the uh, services that are provided by government that particularly poor individuals would not have access to. So I w also would like to hear more about this information. I would like to see what we are doing now in the city and really decide what is going to be best for our employees and what is going to be best for the people of the state of California. Thank you. Ms. Senna. Um, I'm not uh, familiar specifically for uh, about AB 220, um, but if you're asking about universal health care, uh, I think it's a great opportunity for people uh, the preamble to the Constitution says uh, that Americans have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Life means health insurance. There are people that die because they don't have health insurance. And if everyone has the same health insurance, then the city does not have to worry about our employees being covered, about how to b recruit people, other countries, every industrial country, industrialized country has universal health care. And it works, I've spoken to Canadians and Englishmen, it works very, very well. Thank you. Thank you. I think we have gone through quite a, a variety of questions here. And 
It has it has reached the time when we can uh, move to our closing statements. The closing statements will be one minute each, and they will be in reverse order of the opening statements. So we will begin with Kathy Warner. Thank you. So I want to let you know about my passion for serving this city. I have loved doing this. My family came here in 1920. <clears throat> And my husband and I are now co-parenting the sixth generation of our family to live in Whittier. He's eight years old, so we kind of are having a redo. Uh, so I'm very passionate about serving this community. I would love to continue serving this community. Um, my family has lived all over Whittier. As I mentioned, I grew up on the west side of town in the middle of eighth grade, moved to East Whittier. My parents lived in Uptown in the historic district, and my siblings lived uh, off of Gunn Avenue in the southern part of the community. Um, I know our community well uh, because of having grown up here, lived here since the age of five. I love serving this community. I love working with all the residents in our community to solve problems, and uh, I would love to continue serving you in this capacity. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we will hear from Monica Senna. Uh, to summarize, my big issues are enhanced communication. It must be bi-directional and greater frequency. We also need to improve um, safety so businesses flourish and residents can feel safe ensuring the revitalization plans for Uptown and the Whitwood uh, make sure that they're the best available. I pledge not to accept any campaign donations from any company that does business with the city or city now or might do so in the future. We need to start conversations about some important issues, enhance communication, consequences for nonviolent offenders, affordable housing, um, rent stabilization, election date change, and term limits. Um, I have been an educator for over uh, 30 years. During that time, you have entrusted me with your most precious possession, your children. I would treat the city of Whittier with the same amount of dedication, caring, and energy. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we will hear from Marianne Pacheco. I am Marianne Pacheco, a teacher, a volunteer, a leader, and a longtime resident of the city of Whittier. I've had the opportunity to answer your questions, and I invite you to talk to me about my many concerns that I didn't get a chance to talk about, about development and our infrastructure, about our streets, and more about our urban forest, about our families and our businesses, and most importantly, about our need for change. District 1 needs an active and visible representative who will advocate for its reasons, someone who will constantly say, let's take care of everyone. As a member of the Whittier City Council, I'll be there as the voice of District 1. Thank you so much. Muchisimas gracias y muy buenas noches. Thank you. Now we will hear from Magdalena Mo. My name is Magdalena Barrañón. You're not on, Maggie. My name is Magdalena Barrañón Mo. Me llamo Magdalena Barrañón Mo. Yo soy la única representante que va a representar a nuestra comunidad. I am the only person who will represent my community, my entire community. I have been a, a volunteer of my city, servicing my city for over 45 years because I love the city of Whittier. I want to be a representative that is close to my community and close to the business community. I want to be able to talk to people. I always walk around to find out what their problems are, and I solve issues and problems like lighting, fixing our sewers, fixing our streets. I am a leader in my community because I love my community and I would be honored to serve Whittier City Council District 1 and I will do a good job. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, we will hear from Jessica Martinez. Once again, I'd like to thank the League of Vo uh, Women Voters for taking the time and the energy to, to put on this event. Um, I have enjoyed, for the most part, serving on the Whittier City Council. We've had some difficult times uh, 
in the, in the city of Whittier uh, with COVID and the homelessness issue and so many different things, the defund the police thing that went on. It was really an awful time. But I believe with the steadfastness of the entire council, we've weathered those storms. Um, and we've continued to go on to do things like renovating this the senior center. Um, uh, we've gotten the Helen Putnam Award, Business Award for Excellence out of, of the whole state of California. And we're continuing to make Whittier an even better place for the flourishing of our citizens, of, of our schools, of our children all together. And I'd love to continue um, on the way forward, uh, the way we've been going the last four years. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to thank each of the candidates for participating in this forum this evening. We appreciate your commitment to the city of Whittier and your real devotion to making this city a better place to live. For more information about the candidates, I will be inviting each of them to post information about themselves on the League of Women Voters' most recent website, which is called Vote411. Um, I've submitted all of your names and email addresses, but I have not, uh, they have not been posted and activated yet. So I will be sending you information about how to get your, your profile up on Vote411. We appreciate the fact that in the past our candidates have been uh, eager to use the League's candidate information website that we have provided. I would like to thank all of you in the audience for being here tonight and for listening, for asking uh, a variety of questions that pertain to the things that you think are important in the city of Whittier. I would like you to inform your friends and your neighbors that this forum will be rebroadcast on uh, Whittier's Channel 3 government cable, and it will be placed on the Whittier YouTube channel so other people make, may uh, look at these forums uh, in the next couple of weeks before the election. And, of course, please remember to vote now <laughs> or at least by April the 9th either using your vote by mail ballot, which has come, or using um, the city's vote centers, which will be open to you uh, in April. So thank you again very much. I'd also thank the people from AEW and League of Women Voters who have helped put this forum on, made it, uh, have facilitated it for us. And uh, at this point, I say good evening. Thank you very much. <laughs>